You are not going to believe this, but we're going to try to hatch the smallest quail in the world. Guys, look how tiny. Y'all check out how tiny these eggs are. I mean, look at my hand compared to these eggs. These are a type of bird that are called button quail. But these eggs were given to us as a gift from our dear friends at Four Kids in the Farm. I'll put a link to their YouTube channel down below, so be sure to check those guys out. But these little quail eggs are about to start hatching. All right, me and Carl has got their brooder set up. And look, that is like bottle caps. <laughs> mini Jarly is for the feeder, and that is a finch feeder for the waters. Right. I mean, these things are gonna be tea tiny. This is button. Our little button quail. Uh, another fan of our channel has sent us uh, button quail eggs uh, maybe last year. And button was the only one that made it out of all the ones we hatched. But we're fixing to have, hopefully, you think there's seven, seven that are seven that'll be hatching. I don't know if you can really see it, but that dark brown green one, um, there's so pretty. Look at the that colors. One? There's blue, olive, green, gray, brown. I mean, they're just beautiful that eggs. That one right there is even uh -huh. a purplish. Yeah, gorgeous. And sometimes if you sit here long enough, they move just a little bit. Little, little. They do? Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully we'll have some hatching here directly. Um, probably tomorrow, hopefully. Fingers crossed. The next day. Compared to a penny. I'm going to get a couple of more button quail out. And I have in the bottom for bedding shelf liner on the top and then heavy duty paper towels on the bottom. If you wanted to, you could just do the heavy duty paper towels. But since the shelf liner has holes in it, I recommend putting the paper towels up under there. Alright, believe it or not, believe it or not. These things have specific colors. And what we got? This one is called a uh, double factor blue face. It could just be a blue faced. And this one is? This is just your normal old button quail, which is just like, like button, but darker. Looks like button, but darker, okay. It's like a red chest and then a dark, like almost navy blue body. Okay, cool. Th this one is called Darth Vader. Is that him making that noise? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So that's a Darth Vader. This is a tuxedo. This one? Also known as Pied. Tuxedo or Pied. It's hard to show them exactly to you because they're a little crazy. <laughs> It'll jump it's out. It's really hard to tell the colors at this age, too. Okay, so th these may change up. This is your best guess right now. Yes. I'm believing this is a slate uh -huh. or silver. Okay. And this may change up. Yes. All right. One thing that's different about button quail than any other thing we've ever hatched is it only took 14 days for them to hatch. Super high humidity. It cost for almost like 80%. Our incubator wouldn't go that high, it only went to 70, but they hatched out just fine. And they make just kind of cool pets. They're super easy to take care of. So if you never tried button quail or hatching them, give it a shot. The goats are really starting to show their personality, the new baby goats. Especially Coco right here. Coco is a mess. He is a firecracker. Usually he is wide open. We had some rain this morning, so they tiptoeing around. But Coco is a daredevil and is fearless. He'll jump off anything and everything in this goat pen. Won't he? Yes. He is a nut. What's up, Fifi? Hey, girl. Fifi's a pretty goat. <laughs> she is pretty. She's starting to get darker. Yeah. Her spots weren't quite that dark when we first got her. Fifi, what do you think about the babies? Oh, Capri. You clumsy, girl. She is. You are she clumsy. almost fell off the table yesterday. She is so clumsy. 
There is Bronco. The other little boy. And you see the little girls. This is a tiny. This thing right here. This little girl here is tiny. We haven't named her yet. I call her Tiny. Oh, you do call her Tiny? Yeah. Okay. She is so tiny. So cute. And this one we call Callie. Because for Calico. Like a Calico yeah. Cat. That chicken, I guess, is laying an egg. And there's no hay or anything right there. She's going to drop on their heads. <laughs> what in the world? We got to go get some hay and bring it in here. Hey, Bronco. What's up, Bronco? What's up, buddy? Oh, Bronco. Mm -mm. Let me get y'all caught up on this area right here. If y'all remember, this whole area here was nothing but water. It was a big drainage ditch that came down through here. It was real swampy. It stayed wet. The ducks and geese hung out here all the time it was just a mess we couldn't do anything with it but we since brought several loads of dirt in mrs cocky has done this all by herself she spread this dirt out and kind of graded it down making the water go this way there's a natural drain right on the other side of those woods there and we're trying to get this water to go to that natural drain but here's the best part here's what she's super excited about and so happy she now has her very own she shed <laughs> she has got a spot to park her tractor that's undercover and she is beyond stoked about this got, got it all over you didn't i boots good stuff though yes it is Phoebe says she's got an advantage over y'all she is tall enough that she can get it from right here let me get these ropes out of the way girl this is one tip I can give you is don't ever leave these in loose like that because it can get wrapped around something or could cause some serious damage and I don't want you guys to have to go through something like that. Ain't that right Callie? <laughs> the little one tiny is dead asleep look. Want to collect quail eggs and we want to try to do it daily. But the issue we're having is, is we don't really have a nesting area for the quail. We're having to get them up off the ground. And we kind of get in a situation where we don't know if one of them's old or not. So today, I'm going to make a quail nesting box. And this is going to be so easy. All I'm doing is, is I'm taking an old scrap piece of landscape timber, but any wood would work. And I'm going to take these coffee cans or paint cans or whatever you got. We got plenty of these coffee cans laying around. And I'm just going to screw them into this landscape timber and set it down in the coop. And that should be it. Put some hay in there and the quail should be happy and laying here. We got this idea from our friends over there at JK Quail Farm. They do something very similar. So we're going to give it a shot and hopefully it works. Y'all look at them checking it out. Hopefully them checking it out and seeing the eggs in there will definitely entice them to lay in there. Show you guys how pretty the pheasants are getting y'all look. Isn't that awesome? Just gorgeous. So Mary Carl told me she wanted to make some cookies and so we made our favorite cookie, mine and her both favorite cookie, the snickerdoodle, a true American classic. But this recipe is super, super easy and you probably got these ingredients just laying around. Two and three quarter cups of sifted flour, three teaspoons of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt, two sticks of unsalted butter, one and a half cups of sugar, plus an extra quarter cup of sugar mixed with one tablespoon of cinnamon. Set that little mixture to the side. We're gonna come back and use that later. Two large eggs. Combine all your dry ingredients together, set it to the side. Then you wanna get your stand-up mixer or whatever mixer you got. Cream the butter and sugar together until fluffy, usually around three minutes. Add your eggs one at a time. Beat well. Then you want to add your dry ingredients into your wet mixture. 
uh, do a little bit at a time. Don't dump all your flour in there at one time. Go ahead and preheat your oven up to 400 degrees. Now take your wet dough mixture, and you can put it in the refrigerator so it don't get quite as sticky and it's a little bit stiff, but roll your little dough into little balls about the size of a walnut. Once you get them rolled, then you wanna roll that, that dough into that sugar and cinnamon mixture that you set to the side. Put it on a, a greased baking sheet, put it in the oven, and bake for around eight to 10 minutes. These things are phenomenal. We never let them cool. We go ahead and get us a glass of milk and enjoy them.